Hello and welcome to another video by Enterprise Software Solutions, your number one software dudes. Please remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and updates. Today we're going to talk about what's new and up and coming in Windows Server 2022. So we do have a fresh install Server 22 running up in Azure currently right here. And you'll see there are a lot of things are the same, a, lot of, a couple things are different. So overall, very same look and feel that you would typically expect out of a, looking at a server operating system. A couple of things to point out is, one, IE is now gone. Uh, Edge is the default browser in the taskbar here. Uh, and this is the, the new version of Edge, right? Based on Chromium, not the, the old version. So uh, Edge 2.0, as I kind of call it. And then you kind of go through that setup process and stuff as you kind of expect to have. The other thing are graphics. So we open up the start menu. You can look at here, there are a few things in a graphic perspective that are slightly different. So the setting icon is a little bit different, window security a little bit different, the folder is slightly different, All right? So just kind of a small step in updating UI elements and things to make that look more quote unquote modern and fresh. A few other updates just on the underlaying, a bunch of security encryption updates. So DNS over HTTPS, SMB protocol changes, nested virtualization for AMD processors. So now you can basically run Hyper-V inside of Hyper-V inside of Hyper-V if you want. And then changes for supporting features, quicker installation, a few things like that. But all in all, from the initial release notes, seems to be kind of a relatively small update to the operating system stack. Now, a couple other things that come out with that are a lot of hybrid tools. So configurations and things to kind of help you get the best out of Azure and your hybrid workloads. Uh, so, so one of those new things is the Windows Admin Center. This is kind of the concept Microsoft's been working on for a little bit now of Updating tooling configuration and, and management machines at scale, kind of getting away from the MMC snap-ons and going to this kind of platform. So I've got one server in here already. This is the server that the MMC is installed on. And so you'll see a bunch of stuff on the left-hand side about certificate security center, Azure configuration, firewall, right? a lot of things you'd expect to see when you're trying to think about managing a virtual machine. And then of course, center pane is specs of the machine itself. And then like with the Azure system, you got to go ahead and sign in the portal. And you would do that. New features become available. Azure Arc for hybrid management, discovering Azure services. You can always see what's available if you have it already. Adding things is just as easy. So, you know, do you want PCs? Do you want failover clusters? Do you have a random server? We're going to go ahead and add a server. As you see, you can have the list to import, you can search Active Directory, and then once that's in and added, it'll connect into the list, and then you can go ahead and manage that. Once again, same look and feel between all your machines and systems and, and those kind of configurations. Uh, so like, for example, like you wanna to go to roles features, you can go grab that. Uh, say you wanna install DNS. You get a description as you kind of expect what's available to you hit the install button, and then it does the same thing that server manager has been doing for years, right? Calculating dependencies, figuring out what you need, and it kind of goes to that same similar uh, workflow you're used to. Now, the other new feature that's came out with the announcement is the, the storage migration service. So this is oriented to small, medium-sized businesses that need to do storage migration up into Azure, right? Storage migration service. So this is a bit different than what's been available before with like Azure Migrate and like the ASR back configuration, where there's a lot less dependencies and tooling and things that are part of it. It's a pretty simple point and go kind of thing. So you get a basic overview dashboard of, you know, what have you inventory cut off, migrate, et cetera. And then you just create new jobs. Select if you want admin shares, if you want failover cluster, failover cluster does require a uh, failover cluster RSAT tools, which it does check for you. I've already installed it. Once again, provide my device name. And you can add by device name, by IP address, they're just using whatever credentials you put in there. So if you have different credentials for different servers, you'll have to do different jobs and then validate, start a scan. Let's do inventory, it'll find adapters, configurations, volumes. And then once you're ready to go, you can then perform storage migrations easily in the environment. So you'll see that here's the drives that are available. These are fresh installs, so we're just using the admin shares. And then you complete through the wizard. So you can see you can create a new VM, you can add to an existing VM, write a name, you can transfer to a configuration. 
do want to point out you do have to have Active Directory available to leverage the functionality as you see there when you go through the build of VM, eventually gets to the point where you have to ask for a credential. Same thing when you want to select a new one. In this case, we'll just say we're not going to transfer files to finish creating the job. And then when you go back to your dashboard, right, you see here are the files that are available in inventory. And then if I was doing a transfer, I'll cut over the status of those. And then you can always just go down and see who created these jobs, who managed them, all that data is there. And then like, if you ever looked at the Azure migration stuff, much simpler, much easier, much quicker to get up and running. You know, that just single dependency on AD, not a big deal for most people and get you going with the migration fairly quickly and easily. So I hope you found this video useful on what's new Windows Server 2022. Thank you for watching. And don't forget that Enterprise Software Solutions is your number one software dudes.